Welcome to the Den Hager Woods. My name is Mark and we are planting some trees today. So we have Tara digging holes. We have Tiana, she's on dirt, soil, on rock, picking out rock duty of, of soil. <laughs> and our son Braxton has come from for the weekend. Uh, he's uh, living in the city. And then we have our volunteers. So Shannon is uh, taking care of the dog patrol. <laughs> making sure they get pet and Marlene is uh, she's she's on pack a poop so the fertilizer so if you didn't know alpaca poop is really good for plants and it doesn't burn so you don't have to let it sit a year uh, like you do some other manures like cow and horse so the trees that we have are I believe this is uh, cherry or pear so this one is the golden spice pear. We've got eight trees in total. So four of them are going to be along here. So then we have a Evan Sour Cherry, and then we have another pear, and then we have another cherry. So this here is the dog run, but we do allow the animals to come in and mow this. So we're going to have to uh, temporarily put a fencing uh, around on this side of the trees so that uh, they don't get pruned until they get uh, larger. Now we do have some other ones, uh, apricot or apricot, however you say it. Those are over there. And what are the other ones, Tara? Uh, sour cherry. Oh, that's one. Yeah, we got Plum. sour cherry, we got pear. Plum. Plum. Okay. Making jam. Making jam, making plum jam. Uh, so the plum ones are uh, over behind the play structure. So we'll go over and have a look at those. So the whole idea here is that is the animal run, uh, the smaller animal run. This is the main run with the pond and shade. So this is north. So we want to make sure that the animals do have shade. This area here is an enclosed area. We do have some smaller uh, little contraptions here that we've built and there is a willow over here a really nice willow so that is called a Chinese hardy willow so we're planting the trees and all we can hear is the kids crying <laughs> so they will do this to call their moms because they're hungry and it's and it's raining <laughs> Are you guys hungry and wet? So the moms will likely come in anyway because it is raining. They can handle a little, little bit. <laughs> there they go. It says moms are going in. Come on, let's go. Let's, where's your mom? Your mom's snow. She's getting a little slow in her old age. So she'll likely come out from the back area. Yeah, everybody's getting in out of the rain. Let's go, Hanny. Okay, this shelter is great. Because now we can house all of our animals in here. Bronwyn, where is, uh, I guess snow probably is still out back, yeah. <laughs> She'll make it. That's whose kids are crying. Uh, Willow. Willow. Hi, Willow. How's your baby doing? Meadow. Oh, I hear Shadow. Shadow's not far behind. Of course, Sheldon is digging in here, having some lunch. And Moira is getting much better with humans. Where is uh, Shadow? I heard her. Did you hear her, Hanny? <laughs> yeah, it's really starting to come down now, which makes it a little, a little tough to pull out the camera. Oh, I bet you that's see shadows over here. And it was likely <laughs> there's Levi up front. So it could have even been Levi that was calling for shadow. Uh, so we did get some fish. So Tara did end up picking up some fish for the pond. But can we see them? No. There are 150 goldfish. So we ended up putting goldfish in the pond. 
uh, but we will be making sure that we'll screen off the trench that goes out to the ditch uh, because we don't want the goldfish, which are invasive species to this region, we don't want them getting out into the Manitoba water system. Uh, no chance of that happening this year, but come next spring, we don't want them to uh, swim out into the ditch area. So, can we see them? Now that it's raining, of course, you got all these ripples on the top. There was one that was seen in this top section, and obviously it got sucked up through the pump <laughs> and dumped into here. Uh, the area over here, yeah, you're just not gonna be able to see them. They're likely in the lower areas. Tara was mentioning that she'd like to pick up uh, 200 more to put in, uh, but that's gonna make uh, a big difference on the, the green the organic material that's in there, which you can kind of see is settling to the bottom. Uh, so we had some stuff that was floating on top. We had uh, over there, there is some duckweed that's kind of floating, and there's a little bit more over in that area over there. Uh, but once you get that sediment going down there, the ducks will go down, the ducks, the geese will go down, and they'll, they'll pick away at some of this stuff. Uh, but you want to make sure that uh, the fish are in there as well, because there's a lot of little bugs Okay, they're just using some of the extra soil to fill in some of the lower areas, but we have our four trees in, and we'll go over and we'll plant the other ones. Uh, now, something that I wanted to, uh, I was thinking about, I had some ideas for a video this weekend, and then other things came up, and the tree planting, and a bunch of different things like that, and I'm like, oh, well, why don't I just kind of incorporate them all together? Uh, you guys don't mind too much, as long as there's animals in the video. Uh, so let's just uh, go and continue on with my original plan, which was talking about predators on the farm. Uh, so we have had uh, we have had people comment and asking, what kind of predators do you have? Do you have a predator problem? Uh, we do, but it's the crows, which uh, if some of you have asked in the comments, uh, you know this already, uh, crows come in and they'll steal eggs. Generally, it's the goose or the duck eggs. We haven't had a problem with other animals. We have had some cougars in the area, fox, wolves, uh, but our fencing around the outside of the property is all electric. Uh, now, you can go back to a video I did last year, I think it was. Uh, I did a video on installing electric fence, and there's a predatorial wire system that you want to look at. It's either a five or seven, or I think there's even a nine wire system. It basically uh, charges up the area down lower where those predators will be. So they won't be able to crawl under it. Uh, they won't be able to go over it. The only thing that really gets over our fencing are deer, uh, and they sometimes knock down the top line. So one thing that we've lost is we've lost a turkey last year. One of Fernando's girls uh, went and sat down at the barn there, underneath a tree, outside of the fenced-in area. Uh, so she disappeared along with all of her eggs. Now I showed you this, I believe it was last week, uh, a nest. So we have a duck that's sitting in here. <laughs> uh, I believe this is one of the Cayuga ducks. So she's tucked in underneath here, uh, and the crow had no idea that anything was there, so uh, it's remained untouched. So she's now sitting. So we'll likely have some ducklings, I would think, two weeks. Now there is another area uh, underneath the deck here, and this is being shared by two of them. This is a great little spot. Uh, they tucked right in, uh, and you can see right there that I've got that uh, Realtek uh, Argus 2 camera that I've been playing around with. Fits into nice little areas, uh, and then I've got a wire that comes up here that goes to uh, the solar charging. So it just, it's completely wireless. It charges on its own. I don't have to worry about it dying, and I can always check in on them. Uh, so there's the two girls that are in there. One is a, a cross. I thought it, uh, originally it was the Harlequin duck, but I, I believe it's a cross, Rowan cross. And the other one is, looks like a mallard, but uh, it is actually a Rowan female, so the brown one. Rowan uh, is a larger breed of duck than the, the mallard, uh, but of course they look identical. There's a little guinea, or one of our tick patrols, which this has been a really bad year for ticks. Uh, last few years we have never had a tick, but this year we're starting to get ticks. 
So they're not, uh, they're not doing their job or they've just overwhelmed. Uh, so here we go. So this is a uh, casino apricot or apricot. Uh, so we, we're gonna plant, I'm not sure exactly where these are going, but they're going in this area. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to go kind of uh, just away from the electric fence along this side, uh, but I don't know. That up there is our septic field, so we want to stay away from that. So we won't be planting anything up in that area there. And look at this, rhubarb. Uh, this has just blown up in the last week. I think it was last weekend I looked and I saw a little, uh, a little spot down in here. Now with this, these are the seeds that are coming up. If you want your rhubarb to flourish and you're going to use a lot of it, uh, you can cut that off and it's going to put all that energy into the rhubarb leaves themselves. Uh, what we did a few years ago is we actually let, let that grow up. Now it'll come up in multiple different areas and you can see the size of that stalk there. Uh, now if we look down here you can see another one starting to grow right here uh, and, and you just go through and you find them and you can just break them off. Uh, but we let one of them go to seed and we had a whole bunch of rhubarb seed. I'm not sure what we did with it. It's probably in with all of our other seeds. Uh, but um, decide what you want to do with your rhubarb. If you want to let it go to seed, maybe plant it in different areas and have a lot more rhubarb, uh, then uh, let it go to seed. But you're not going to get as thick or lush rhubarb if you do that, because it's going to put its energy into, uh, into the seeds. If you hear that noise behind me, uh, it's actually construction crew that's working on the highway. Uh, so we live right on a main highway and what they're doing is they're breaking that all up and they're actually expanding it and putting it in a paved shoulder. That's where the plum trees are going. Oh, the ants. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So look at... Oh, geez. Yeah. And then they're carrying that's, eggs right here. Oh, those are little... Is that a queen maybe? I think so. That's a big one. Because if that's the one and these little tiny things in here are the other one. Yeah, I got worm. Well, we should put something in there. Um, probably some DE, some cayenne pepper. What do you guys think? DE, we'll throw some DE in there because we want to keep our ants away from our fruit trees. We live on a gravel pit. So it drains off very well. See, it's only wet to here. Yeah. Well, that's your humus layer here that's only... Uh, six inches, I guess. Why our straw bale garden is oh, above ground. Yeah. They're gonna get these rocks. Oh should yeah, we should. Don't eat the rocks because when I mow. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go look at the uh, straw bale garden. Mm -hmm. Update on that. So predators, uh, of course, predators to other animals and predators to plants. Example, the uh, the ants that are uh, found in that uh, in that hole where they're putting the tree. So uh, another kind of predator is, of course, rabbits and deer uh, that are going to eat the garden. Now Tara was very frustrated last night. Uh, she came out and she had planted these, uh, which uh, I think they're squash or cucumber. And apparently they were all pulled out. Now she grew these, you can see that in last week's video, uh, where we did talk about the straw bale garden. Uh, and how she plants everything. Uh, but she came out last night and all these things were pulled up and out. So what she figures happened is a duck maybe came along and grabbed a hold of them and pulled them up and figured, oh, I don't like the taste of that, and just went and pulled them all up. Now, there might be something else that, uh, that happened, but who knows. So she went and she grabbed, this is dog pen fencing, you know, that kind of stuff that if you have a puppy, you can buy this and you can put it around a certain area of your house. Uh, and that can be their area where they sleep and they've got their, their little piddle paper that you put down. So she went and she grabbed <laughs> all of this because we had, we used to go out and do petting farms, but we've been so busy lately, we haven't been. So we've got a whole bunch of this fencing that we've collected over the years, but we had uh, picked up, now this was kind of a failed project from a few years ago. Uh, I had picked up the electric fencing material, the mesh fencing, because we were going to do something with the chickens where we were going to rotate them and move them around, um, but 
due to issues with having a bunch of roosters out in the area, which we've got to uh, address where they're going to go and how we're going to do the, the hens because we don't want the roosters to get in with the hens. So I think we're going to be putting a, uh, a cover, kind of like the peafowl pen, uh, a netting over top of there. So we've got a few challenges that we're working with. And of course, that's what happens when you have so many animals all together. Uh, and you don't have the goat pen and the sheep pen and the chicken hutch and the rabbit hutch, the chicken coop. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm getting it all mixed up myself. <laughs> uh, so when you have them all, all together, it, it can be challenging. Uh, so I mentioned to her, I said, well, why don't you take that netting, that electric fence netting? You can electric charge it or not. You probably don't even have to, uh, but it has its own stakes. So you can put it around and, and it'll get most of the way around here. And she's like, wow, I didn't even think of that. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's something that I think she's going to uh, change. Actually, no, she's not gonna change that out. Because yesterday, see, I'm getting updates all the time, just like you guys are. Uh, yesterday, she picked up this wood here. Now, these are two by fours, treated two by fours. I believe they're eight feet. And this is stucco wire. So I've talked about stucco wire in the past where uh, you can have that down in your rabbit hutch on the bottom. The only problem with this uh, is rusting. So it can rust away. So what we've changed to is we've put in uh, patio blocks, the concrete patio blocks. So what she's going to do is where these posts are, she's got some treated posts, some round treated posts, and she's going to put them eight feet apart. And she's actually going to make a fencing just like the fencing up front. Uh, and that's going to keep the animals, hopefully, or the ducks anyway, and the, and the mammals, it'll keep them out of that area. Of course, the little chipmunk is going to, uh, I don't know if he's doing any damage, but it's not going to stop, uh, stop them from getting in. So I've talked about predators mammal predators, foxes, coyotes, uh, and such. So the electric fence is good for that. Now, other predators like crows that I mentioned, we don't have any problems or haven't had any problems with hawks or eagles. We've seen a couple fly by, but they've just kept on going. So those haven't been a concern. What we have done with crows, it's kind of worked, uh, not really good, but it's kept them away from certain areas. So these are, bicycle you buy them at like a at a dollar store uh, and uh, they're meant for little girls bikes and they go on they they just push on to the end of the handle so it's just a tinsel type material you want to make sure that um, they're in good shape they're not falling apart because you don't want tinsel down with the animals and she's kind of put them in areas now the area that the crow was actually getting into was uh, over there in the it's a, it's a little duck house, essentially. Uh, we've made these little spots, little nesting boxes. Uh, so we've got uh, that one there, and then we've got uh, that one over there. But of course, if you notice, there's no tinsel over in that area. Uh, and you don't want it down lower because the goats will jump up on those little structures as well, and they'll chew on them and eat them. So we've just been kind of keeping an eye on things here is another one that we built years ago but of course nobody has actually used it uh no i don't see any there's some rocks in there but no there's nothing in there so with predators uh we've tried scarecrow we even had uh up on top here and we've still got it it's actually up on the deck it's a carving of an owl uh, and it was mounted i think it was screwed in with one screw uh through the roofing there but of course when the ice built up and it was sliding off uh, it just sheared it right off <laughs> and uh, apparently Tara was out there when it happened when it was just about to fall off and if it had a fallen it would have broken uh, because it's got some intricate work on it uh, but uh, I'm not sure if she is going to put that back up but that seemed to work last year so we'll see how things uh... look at that look at that rooster I'm like what is that up there <laughs> That's the highest I've ever seen. Oh, he's going up. He's going right up to the top. <laughs> that is just, that is funny. He has got to be, I don't know, 10, 12 feet off of the ground. <laughs> I thought it was the peacock at first. Uh, but then I thought, no, that's black. 
That's hilarious. Oh now, oh now he's gonna come down. Uh, oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> that wasn't very graceful at all. <laughs> came down, bounced off the tire, but he's okay. <laughs> You know, uh, a couple, uh, it was last week, I think, I took a picture of a rooster that was just crashed, lying down, never seen that done before. They don't usually lie like that, and I thought it was dead. Uh, a lot of times when the kids are sleeping, they're just, <laughs> they've just let everything go. This is a nice favorite spot. It is up on the bench, and of course, it's right in the sun, so it's nice and warm. Uh, it's underneath the shelter of this overhang here. Hi, Shadow. How you doing, girl? Are you hanging out with your with your sister? <laughs> uh, the other kids. Oh, <laughs> Spock. He's the rambunctious one. Look at that. That's a feed tray, buddy. But I guess whatever works, right? Oh, Blackie. Blackie doesn't want to be a part of this. She's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, yep, I guess this is the time to chew your cud, isn't it, kids? How can you rest with that racket? People have commented about that, too. <laughs> it doesn't bother us. We're in the house. We're used to it. Uh, we live near train tracks that run along the back. I grew up. Uh, my father was in the military, so we were by, uh, by airports, military airports quite often. So you just get used to the noise. And it's the country noise. Not like that road construction, right, Shadow? You don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, okay, here's another one that is out. Oh, what happened to your baby, Willow? <laughs> She's sleeping. Oh, yeah. Sheldon, it's so nice outside. Oh, the other ones are in. Oh, you're out here getting all the little oat bits after yoga this morning. So another type of predator, of course, is um, parasites. Parasites on animals. Now, we did a video a few weeks ago about parasites and how we treat them. I did talk about DE earlier uh, with the girls over there in Braxton uh, planting. Uh, now it works good as a natural uh, parasite control for animals, so dusting them. Uh, but you always want to pay attention to, like, do regular checks on them. Uh, and usually on the neck, around the ears, and just f look for little movement, little bugs. Uh, but it's good to do a treatment regularly, so once a month kind of thing. If you see something, then I would do a couple uh, treatments back to back. You can use DE, you can use fireplace ash if you don't have DE, diatomaceous earth, available to you. Uh, and it's just, uh, you don't have to use chemicals and things of that nature. We used to use dusting powders and such, uh, but we try to do things a lot more natural and keep things uh, a lot more chemical free. So they've moved on over to the other area where the apricots, apricots are. I don't want to get in trouble, so I'm saying it both ways. <laughs> uh, so here are the trees. Uh, here are the pear trees, right? Plum. Plum trees. The fruit trees. So you always want to plant two of them. That's why we have uh, two of each because of course you need one pollinated to the other one uh, to get your fruit. Uh, so that's pretty important. This is how we make our ducks grow. Actually, no, it's not. They just, they just love to be watered. <laughs> this is, oh, don't forget me. <laughs> uh, the boys. So getting back to predators, uh, let's get in here. This top wire isn't on. Uh, I've left it disconnected so I can actually grab a hold of this and climb over. But they don't know. Okay, so uh, getting to predators. So donkeys. People have asked us, you guys should get some donkeys. We have had some donkeys in the past. Uh, and there's videos uh, about our donkeys. Now this here is a Levi, a miniature horse. And I don't see the other boys around. Um, they're probably... They were just here. Uh, but anyway, uh, getting back to that, you can use... Uh, oh, 
just as I turn around. You can use, uh, uh, like donkeys will keep predators away, cougars. Um, they've had excellent success on getting rid of cougars. Cougars just, they know and they stay away. Uh, Carl here, are you gonna take out some, uh, some predatory animals, is that it? Just your smell will keep them away. So getting to uh, the smell of goats, they will smell if they are left intact, like Carl and like Billy. What are you doing? You're, oh yeah, <laughs> just get away from me. <laughs> he was trying to rub up against him, just like Carl is doing right here because he wants to put his smell on me. So I've mentioned this in the past that if you are getting goats, uh, you might want to start with um, having a fixed male because they uh, they are a lot more calm. Uh, and this is uh, to, our, on our to-do list. We've got to get this thing fixed up. Uh, now this is Bobby. Bobby is fixed. Aren't you, bud? So he is nice and calm and very friendly. Not like the other boys. And his antlers are intact because he doesn't mindlessly whack things like trees and buildings and structures and break it. All right, the last two trees are planted. So we have one over there and we have one over there. And the sun is basically come out now, uh, a lot more than it was before. We, uh, it rained this morning. Uh, so we've got uh, some visitors coming to see the animals. Oh, and look at them all come in. <laughs> There's a whole group of people. As soon as the sun comes out, uh, time to see the animals. So I'm going to call this a video and um, I've got some exciting um, video plans coming up. Uh, so please stay tuned. You can go to our YouTube page and you can click on subscribe. You can click on that bell to get notified of new videos that come out. And if you go up to the playlist section, uh, you can actually see the different videos of the different years that I put in. Uh, so I think this is three years now that I've been making videos. Uh, so you can click on that. You can go back if you want a little bit more of the 10 Acre Woods. Uh, have a look there. Until next week, have a wonderful week and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.